it wouldn't be illegal for people under the age of 21 to smoke, uh, but it would be illegal for um, people uh, to sell cigarettes to people under the age of 21. One of the reasons why we've uh, we've come forward with this particular proposal, and it's one of a number of proposals that we've we've suggested, is that virtually no one uh, these days starts smoking after the age of 21. Uh, when you're you're most likely to start smoking when you're young, and then once you start smoking, it's extremely difficult to quit because nicotine is one of, if not the most, addictive drugs there is. And cigarettes are the most effective means of delivering nicotine into your system. So it's very hard for people that are addicted to cigarettes then to give up. Um, so what we're saying is that uh, we should have restrictions on at the point of sale. Uh, we should have licensing on the selling of, of uh, cigarettes and other tobacco products, uh, as well as um, uh, the other thing that we're looking at as well is that uh, pregnant women are 11% uh, of pregnant women still carry on smoking, which is harmful, obviously, to them and to their unborn child. So we're suggesting that the pregnant women should automatically be routed to smoking cessation services and their partners should as well. Um, so they can both give up together. So much to think about there, Bob. And I'd never thought of that fact that practically no one picks up a cigarette after the age of 21 and says, this is a good habit for me. Well, why, why is that? Well, I think most people who smoke will say the same thing, that they started smoking maybe at school or maybe when they went to college, university, or started a new job. And the reason why is because it's, it's one of those things that you do to be in with your mates yeah. um, and and therefore there's, there's peer group pressure to start smoking because everyone else does uh, these days i mean the good thing is that less and less young people do start smoking so that's that's the good news uh, but it, it's a fact of life that the tobacco companies are scared stiff that we'd increase the age because they know that that would literally choke off their supply of people that will carry on smoking for probably all their lives. Interesting. Uh, at this stage, Bob, I'd like to bring in Chris Snowden. Uh, Chris is from the Institute of Economic Affairs. He's head of Lifestyle Economics. And uh, Chris, basically, you heard Bob saying there that the uh, tobacco companies would be petrified uh, ab about all of this. Uh, you might say that the Treasury might be petrified if the tobacco industry uh, stops paying its due. Well, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. So obviously, the government makes a lot of money from uh, tobacco. I'm not sure what the effect would be in practice of raising the age to 21 if people at the age of 13, 14 are already getting hold of cigarettes when the age is 18. I'm not convinced that it would have uh, an enormous effect uh, other than making life a lot more difficult for grown adults between the ages of 18 and 20 who want to buy cigarettes. I mean, kids are not getting cigarettes from shops, generally speaking, they're getting them from other sources. So I'm not sure it would have a massive effect on underage smoking, but it would certainly be a trampling of the rights of adults who want to smoke. Why, why do you think it would affect adults? Make that... well, they, because 18, 19, 20-year-olds would not be allowed to go into a shop and buy right. cigarettes. And I yeah. think they should have the right to do so. You asked the question of Bob Blackman there, why do we why we don't make them illegal entirely? I think his answer probably would be because of freedom of choice. So what is, what is your answer? to that, Bob? Well, I think, you know, it's a matter of uh, individuals exercising their, their freedom of choice. Um, obviously, that's a, that's a key point. Uh, what, what I do think as well is that people need to understand the damage they're doing to themselves by smoking. Uh, I, I, you, you said it during your introduction uh, about, you know, 120,000 people die a year of smoking-related diseases. Uh, and the reality is that one, if people give up smoking, their lungs do recover, uh, and they recover, recover quite quickly. My concern is to prevent people from, from becoming addicted to tobacco products in the first place. Uh, and, and what we're doing is, is just ramping up things, I think, to say, this is, by the way, this is a suggestion from us. It's not government policy. The government will look at this, uh, and we'll see what happens. We've also talked about, remember, the licensing of tobacco outlets so that what we've been saying, saying to people is, yes, you can, you can smoke, you can, you can uh, go in and, and get cigarettes provided you're over a certain age. These days, if you go into a pub, a lot of pubs now will say they'll challenge people who look under the age of 21. Um, and, and in fact, I, I was looking in my local pub the other night and they, they all wear badges saying, I'm going to you know, challenge under 21s. 
So it's not just a case of, uh, of looking at uh, people because of uh, freedom of choice. It is a fact of let's help people help themselves. Chris, um, are you opposed to any regulation of smoking? Well, we've already got so much, you know, and Bob just says there we're ramping it up. We are always ramping it up. What, what is the end point to this? You know, over the last few years, I've been on the shows like this many times talking about plain packaging. Seems to be almost forgotten about that for years people were talking about plain packaging as if it was this wonderful thing that was going to stop uh, cigarettes appealing to young people. Why isn't that enough? Why don't we see how that works first? Plus the ban on smoking with cars, plus the, uh, the display ban, uh, the graphic warnings. We've had so much over the years. Um, but we just seem to go on and on and on. And I think really the end goal, if people are honest, is what you uh, mentioned to start with, total prohibition. What, I think we should have an open and frank debate about uh, prohibition rather than this death by a thousand cuts that smokers seem to be undergoing. See, I think he has a very good point there, Bob. I, I, I just don't see why it's OK for people below the age of 21 uh, not to die, but it is if you're over 21. No, the, the key point here is not the, the, the age at which you die. I mean, the fact is that what, what does the tobacco industry, if you have someone from the tobacco industry on here, uh, the, the, the reality is that they would say that they, they get their, their long-term customers under the age probably of 18, probably when they're, uh, they're, they're 16 year olds. And then it becomes really difficult for people to give up smoking in later life. And um, there, there are numerous uh, studies that have been done on trying to get people to quit. Uh, and at this time of year, yeah. probably, you know, everyone's gone through that pre Christmas or post Christmas uh, 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 commitment to give up smoking or whatever. Uh, and a lot of people will have unfortunately fallen by the way, so and gone back to smoking. Yeah. The reality is, once you started, it's a devil of a job to give up. Uh, Christopher, I should say to you, while you've been on air, uh, the Twitter sphere is going a bit busy here, and uh, a lot of tweets asking me to ask you if the organisation you work for is funded by tobacco companies. Are you are you here today at uh, their behest or in their in their pay? Uh, we, the IA does get money from tobacco companies. I think that's a very well-known fact, but I haven't been asked by them to come on. I was asked by you to uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay, but just just making it in the interest of transparency, I just, just sort of want to know, um, you, you are a, a spokesperson then for them, or you're representing their interests. Nothing wrong no, with no, that. No, just... no, 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 just, no. I'm representing the Institute of Economic Affairs. The Institute of Economic Affairs does not represent the interests of everybody who donates money to it. We have hundreds of, of donors. Yeah. How much would they donate to you, do you know? No, I don't know, no. Are you a smoker? I used to be, yeah. Um, I, I gave up with uh, vaping, which I know is something, is something that Bob Blutman's very keen on. And I think, actually, in a way, the, the vaping issue makes the addictive element of smoking less of an issue, if you like. Uh, I think it makes it more of a free choice if people are still smoking with so many alternatives available. And, and, and what do you think was the difference for you as an adult, uh, you know, over the age of 21, to suddenly say, I've had enough of this? Sorry, what do you mean? Uh, why did you give up? Oh, why did I give up? Well, it was the um, it was the ease really with which vaping made changing over. You know, obviously vaping is a lot cheaper and it's uh, much less dangerous. So, once I found an e-cigarette that I got on with, which took a while, um, it happened without me having any intention of giving up. Mm. Yeah, and I know that giving up smoking cold turkey can be very difficult, but I didn't even feel like I was giving up really with vaping. I just switched over to something that was felt similar. Yeah. But so, Chris, I mean, just just finally, I mean, your own words there, less dangerous. Um, if you know cigarette smoking is dangerous, do you have any conflict, do you have any worry about defending it? No, because I smoked very happily for 20 years, and if, if vaping hadn't come along, I probably still would be a smoker. You know, I, I, I knew what the risks were, and I'd more or less accepted that I was going to take that chance. And I think, you know, when you're a, an adult, you can make that decision.